Hello everyone, welcome back to this episode of Bitcoin Trade. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about a news article. Uh, this has been going around for a while and uh, might as well just bring it up because uh, I, I'm going to make some bold predictions today myself. And since, I don't know, it seems like everybody's making making some, some very bold predictions uh, a year in advance in some cases, you know, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll just go out and just predict all the way to the end of uh, I guess um, to the end of when Bitcoins will no longer um, the maximum amount of Bitcoins will be well let me how, do, how can I put it I'll make a prediction that goes out as far as Bitcoins will be mined okay so uh, I've been reading this article on uh, Coindesk here and uh, there it is, there's the article, and there's the author and the date. So, um, I don't know who this guy is, I never met him. Don't know what this person's all about, but apparently his name's Mark T. Williams. He made a prediction that Bitcoin will go down to $10 by I think January 1st, this 2014. Um, Name's the Uni Boston University School of Management professor. So, uh, if you read this article, and you know he's very animate about, you know, that uh, bitcoins are um, overpriced, it's a bubble, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, and. To some degree, I, I agree with this gentleman, believe it or not, and I am a heavy Bitcoin user. And, and it, it might surprise you for me to say that, um, and I'll even go further, this is my prediction here. Um, this, this person does have uh, some valid points uh, about his prediction, uh, but my prediction is that uh, Bitcoins will go to zero. Bitcoins will be worthless. Is that surprising to, he to hear? that from me? Well, yes and, and no. Um, have you seen some of my other previous episodes? I mentioned uh, quite a few things. Uh, one of them was um, Bitcoins will go to infinity, right? Uh, the days of reckoning. And I'll talk a little bit about the day of reckoning. Um, because I'm, I'm going to get to my prediction here. My prediction that um, Bitcoins will be worthless. So how is that possible? How can Bitcoins become worthless? If i am been talking about marketing them and how the value is going to go up and all this stuff. Well, here's here's my crazy prediction. Alright, this is crazy prediction time. I guess ever, since everybody's making a prediction, I'll make a prediction. Okay. Uh, I think in some of my previous episodes, if you watch, or you have been watching, I mentioned that, um, I mentioned a few things. I mentioned uh, the work of the invisible hand, right? I mentioned how uh, Bitcoins will go to infinity. And what did I mean by that? I meant there would be a point in time where there's nothing stopping you from, from buying a Bitcoin or exchanging things for Bitcoins. Um, it's not like the banks are going to close your account, or um, you know, uh, you know, Union West will block your transfers, or, or any transfer company will block your transfer. It's because nobody will sell you, or trade, or exchange, you know, their bitcoins for whatever you got, for all your worldly possessions, for all the money you have, or any buildings or houses you own, or any other businesses that you have. They will not trade anything. For a Bitcoin, you know your kingdom for a Bitcoin. It won't happen. So that's when Bitcoin will go to infinity, All right? And then um, soon after, around the same time, and of course I don't know when this is going to happen. It's all in the future. That's why it's a prediction, right? So in the future, at some point, Bitcoins will go to infinity, and then not shortly after that point. Uh, Bitcoins will be worthless. I just made that prediction. 
And so there's my prediction. I, I don't have a specific date and time. I can give you a range of time. Um, matter of fact, uh, let me let me look up something real quick. Let me, maybe I can find it on CoinDesk here. Let's move to this quick thing. It's a little beginner's guide on CoinDesk. So, so you can't chum out unlimited bitcoins. And it says that's right. The Bitcoin protocol, the rules that make Bitcoin work, say only 21 million bitcoins can ever be created by miners. However, those coins can be divided into smaller parts. Blah 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 blah. Um, okay, so so there is a limit of 21 million. Bitcoins, right? And let me see. Uh, I think there was a time. Okay. I'm not sure if there it doesn't mention any time. It just mentions that there's going to be 21 million. And it's. I think the the time frame is well. Current time. To. I think it was 2140, the year 2140. 2, so from present time to 2140, between somewhere in that time, this is going to occur. That, um, that and this is my bold prediction, okay, that uh, Bitcoins will go to infinity at this particular some point in time it will go to infinity now it could be I don't know it could be tomorrow it could be 2140 it could be before 2140 I'm not sure when that's the crazy thing about it and and you know I always got to be prepared so anyways my, my pr bold prediction is basically um, at some point in time, between now and 2140, and you got to remember, there's really not 21 million bitcoins out there, or there won't be 21 billion, uh, 21 million bitcoins in circulation. It'll be less than that, because, um, as you know, some people have thrown away their computer with their bitcoins on it. Uh, some people have lost bitcoins. Some people forgot their private keys, etc., etc. Whatever. So. There won't be 21 million bitcoins. There'll be less than that, okay? And the other thing is, um, it will go to infinity. And what I mean by that is that uh, no one will exchange their bitcoins for whatever worldly possessions that you have to offer. Nobody. Okay, you're going to be left out, left behind. Um, and then shortly after that, uh, after this certain event, um, it would be bitcoins will be worthless because um, they will serve a purpose and a function for 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 whatever it is, and after that, um, bitcoins will be will will go to zero. They'll be worthless. Um, mainly because they won't be in use for it anymore. But then again, at that point in time, um, you know, fiat currencies will also be worthless. It's kind of interesting that fiat currency will be worthless. Bitcoins will also be worthless. And that's my bold prediction. But it's not going to happen in the summer anytime soon. It's All I know is just, or my predictions are basically from present day to whatever day it is today all the way to um, somewhere you know 2140 or before 2140 
So there's a lot of, you know, time there. I know there's a lot of time there. Uh, chances are this will happen, um, I don't know, it, it could happen in my lifetime. It may not happen in my lifetime. You know, you'll be dead, I'll be dead. Uh, what's the matter, right? Well, I don't know. we'll see. Anyway, so, uh, as far as this gentleman's prediction of, you know, going down to $10, I'm willing to say zero dollars a hundred percent well it will lose hundred percent its value is that is that shocking I think so All right, that, that is very shocking to hear that but you know no more shocking than what this gentleman said um, but you know I think he has some good points and uh, I do agree at some point in time um, you know bitcoins will be worthless but then again, fiat currencies will also be worthless at that time, too. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting uh, to see if my predictions come true. I'm not going to make it at such a short time frame, but, um, you know, that's my bold prediction. So that's crazy prediction time. So I'm not the only one who's cr making crazy predictions. Obviously, this gentleman's making crazy predictions as well. And he is the... <laughs> And he's a professor. So, you know, what does that say? It just says anyone can make a prediction. You don't need, you know, you can be smart or dumb. Uh, own a Bitcoin or not own, own a Bitcoin. You can all make a prediction. But, but that's my prediction anyway. Uh, it's just food for thought. Uh, so, so when the time comes when Bitcoin goes to infinity, and then shortly after that, uh, Bitcoins will be worthless. So, um, anyways, uh, only only time will tell. Only time will tell, and that's that's the only thing I know f for sure. So, there's a short article on this, and um, you know we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I read his I read this article, and um, yeah, I you know there's there's some things about what this gentleman said. I I feel is true um, but you know his predictions of falling below ten dollars I would even go farther I would say worthless bitcoins will become worthless all cryptocurrencies will be worthless at that point um, but then again gold would be worthless nobody wants gold uh, nobody wants silver nobody will want um, you know fiat currencies it's, it's it's one of those events you know so anyways uh, we'll go on to a chart analysis and uh, and there's some other people out there who are um, making some predictions here uh, let me see what is this one no no it's gone it's gone someone someone made a <laughs> Interesting. There was an article here, and I just refreshed it, and uh, the article's gone now because it talked about how there is a reversal, and uh, a lot of people bagged on that uh, reporter, whoever wrote the article about how many times they were wrong. But uh, anyways, let's go back to a chart. Looks like they pulled back their article, knowing that uh, they were wrong. So this is a bit stamp. Okay. So here's here's a chart of Bitstamp on a 12-hour period, and you notice that it did not do a reversal. It didn't do a reversal here. It didn't do a reversal here. It didn't even do a reversal here. It's actually pushing up higher if you look at it. Look at that. So, as I mentioned in my previous episodes, I'm gonna have to pull back to a day now. I'm gonna have to pull back to a day. So, here here's the chart analysis and then here's this resistant line right here I mean resistant line and you notice that it's, it's went sideways after breaking out I mean this is where it originally breaks out right here and it, it kind of breaks out and follows this and then goes along this support line and going sideways and then breaks out well, it's, it's kind of broken out there, but then it pushes upward, breaks out of here, stays above, 
and of course it pushes up more. And so at this point what you want to do is you want to figure out well how how much further will it go and how much will it retract. At some point it, it, it will retract. Okay, because people's uh, they're going to try to take their gains. So let's let's go here and take a look here. So I mentioned um, my previous episode that right around this price range 715 somewhere around there you know 700 uh, mainly because this is going to be the next resistance so it needs to um, it's going to be challenging this price level so it's probably going to hit up to this price level and I would say at this price level would be a it could retract at this price level and the reason why I say uh, it could retract because of previous prices. So basically, um, as the price went down, uh, prices can retract from going down as well as from going up. Okay. So, you know, if this was a bull trap, I hear that term a lot, bull trap. Um, what this is is that the sellers have exhausted themselves. All right. Now the the thing about selling your your bitcoins at some point you're going to run out of bitcoins to sell. It's not like you can go get more bitcoins and just sell them. Oh well, yeah, you can, but you would just be buying bitcoins to sell them, which doesn't make any sense unless unless you're you you're 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 marketing bitcoins, okay? Uh, but for the most part, um, you know, if you're not marketing bitcoins and you're investing it um, which I, I do a little bit of everything. I market it, I invest it, I trade it, I, I buy things with it, I do it all. Uh, you know, I, and it's because it's for my own benefit. So, anyways, uh, you look at the price decreasing. And this is a, if you can, if you look at this, if you look at the overall downtrend, what this is is really uh, a retracement of a downtrend. And so, if you look at it that way, then I guess some people talk about how it's a price reversal. They're correct. The price reversal is up instead of going down. So, so if you want to look at a price reversal, oh, let's see if I can back out. There you go. So here's the spike up. Now the the downtrend after that. So this spike up is a reversal and this 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 downtrend is a reversal of the spike and then this upward breakout is a reversal of this downtrend so I guess when people say reversal coming soon they're right uh, and actually it already happened so this is the reversal of the downtrend so this is a retracement of this particular downtrend so that's why I think this pricing right here is important because it's, it's it's a retracement of this downtrend as it goes back up the question is at this point right around here is it going to go back down or is it going to break out or is it going to range between a certain price that's what you got to figure out all right so it all depends how you look at it. If 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 you're looking at um, if you're looking at you know something like like this you know and you're only looking at you know this much then of course it, you know the reversal is going to be going down right the price reversal is going to go down. Well you know it kind of changes your perspective when you look at it like this and you're going well yeah there is a reversal but the reversal is going to go up so something to keep in mind when people talk about reversals like which reversal are you talking about the reverse of going up or the reverse of going down because that's the nature of of chart analysis it's always going to go up and down you know, I could say everybody who writes about anything about a chart analysis is right. Of course, uh, what do they write about? It depends on your point of view. 
So remember, chart analysis has no scientific process whatsoever. It's just all guessing. And that's all it ever is. That's all it ever will be. But some reason it seems to it seems to work because if you think about things that are logical, people are not logical. Ninety nine percent of the time, uh, people are the most illogical uh, beings on earth. All right, we do the strangest thing. If you think about it, we believe in something that doesn't exist. All right. People believe in something that don't exist. They can't touch it, they can't feel it, they can't smell it, but they believe in it. Now, how illogical is that? So, so for me to do a chart analysis, uh, chart analysis is, is completely, there's no logic to it, there's no science. But yet, we believe in it, and the chart reacts to it. You know, after all, these prices, they, they may be bots, but at some point, you know, they're also, there's, I made a trade, and that trade is showing on here, on the blockchain. Actually, no, actually, it wouldn't show on the, tra my trades wouldn't show on the blockchain. Um, my trans, my transfers would show on the blockchain, but, um, but if you look at it, I mean, it's everything that this is and any chart whether it's a stock chart, a US dollar chart, it's all illogical. It makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, and, and my answer to that and the reason for that is because people are illogical. People have, um, oh, there's no rhyme or reason why people do things, in my opinion. It's, just, it's psychological most of the time. So, anyways, that's kind of what I wanted to show you on this when people talk about price reversal what price reversal are they talking about so there's um, bitstamp and let's go into bitc and let's pull back to a 12 hour on this and, and uh, I did mention about bitc in particular because bitc was showing me a resistance here and it totally reacted to it matter of fact it, it went below for a little bit and then just blew right by it and which is interesting, if you look at this, you'll see that it broke through this resistant line, settled, went back down, and this resistant line became the basis of a push up forward. And also, as you notice, as it broke out, you'll see that it's following the 10-day simple average as a support as well. So not only was this area, this downtrend, became a support to bounce up more, it, the 10-day average was also another support that it's bouncing up. So if you look at this, just on the simple average, how bullish this, um, you know, this uptrend has been, it's been riding on the 10-day period on the 12-hour. That's very, very strong in my opinion. It's one thing to have a one-hour, um, you know, simple 10-period average in which this spikes up, but this is a 12-hour so this is a very, very strong push-up. Um, that's a very, very strong indication of, uh, I would say, some kind of demand going on. And I've, I've mentioned before, and I'm noticing this, that how it's harder and harder to get Bitcoins. It's becoming harder and harder. You know, banks are closing accounts, uh, wire transfer companies are not transferring your your transfer to, to, to make that payment for um, a Bitcoin. Um, you know, it's, it's gotten clearer on, on what, how to treat Bitcoin, but at the same time, it's beginning to be harder and harder because I think uh, there's just forces out there um, that are like Union West uh, and what, what's the other one? PJ Dorkin Jez, uh, HG Wells, um, you know, those are some institutions that have made it very hard 
to acquire bitcoins. So, you know, it's going to get harder and harder and harder. But at the same time, it's opened up a lot more. I mean, you can use your bitcoins for a lot of stuff, but at the same time, trying to get bitcoins, uh, it's going to become harder and harder. I mean, even Coinbase, um, well, let's just go on to the, the chart here. I'll mention Coinbase a little bit. Well, I'll just go to Coinbase. Uh, this is Coinbase, and even Coinbase has changed their policy on on um, getting instant bitcoins. So you, it used to be where you can get ten bitcoins, a, you know, per week instantly. Like you didn't have to wait the the five days um, for for you to get bitcoins. Um, now they only they changed that to where you can only you know have a thousand dollars worth of bitcoin instantly. So, so even then, it's harder to get bitcoins. I mean, you can get them, but you know you don't want to. You don't want to. The problem with Coinbase is that you have to. You you buy your bitcoins, but you have to anything over that thousand dollar instant buy. If you ever get up to that verified level, um, you know you have to wait five days before you actually get the Bitcoin to do whatever you want. I mean, it shows up in your account and all that, but you can't, you can't trade it. You can't really use it until it actually, you know, shows up until the Bitcoins actually become available. And, you know, if you look about, if you look at it, if you, if you bought here, you did great. If you bought any time here within a five day period, you did horrible. So, um, I guess it depends. You're, you know, five days, uh, for for Bitcoin trading is a long time, it really is. I mean, this all this happened within three, three to four days. Uh, so if you bought around here on Coinbase, you did very well. If you were able to, um, well, if you bought um, enough over the thousand dollars, that would have to take five days. Um, you know, that made you hold on to your Bitcoin, so you probably um, are receiving the benefits, but. Anyway, so even even Coinbase is making it a little bit more restrictive in the amount of bitcoins you can get. So, if you look at this chart here on Coinbase, um, you know I, I don't see any reversal whatsoever. I don't see any indication of any reversal. Matter of fact, if you really look back and you pull back on this, and if you're one of those Elliott Wave theorists, okay. Um, I don't know how they would uh, look at this because it tends to change until after after the waves have been um, established, right? So there's a one, two, three, four, five kind of wave in what they're saying. So I'll talk a little bit about the whole wave theory. It's so basically that um, you know you'll get the first wave, and the first wave is smaller, but it's the first indication of of whatever wave, a downward wave or an upward wave, and then it pulls back, and then that's the one, two, and then three, and the three wave is always the longer portion of the wave, and then it'll be a four, and then the last wave, five, is going to be um, not as long as the third third wave, but the problem with that is that there's waves within waves within waves <laughs> so what, what the hell did I just say well anyways uh, I'll give you an example so I'm gonna pull back to uh, a three-week period and I'll give you a, an example of a wave after wave after wave alright so if you look in this chart that I pull back three weeks it just goes to this point on Coinbase but I could say that's one this is a downward trending wave. So first wave, so one, two, third wave being the longer of the wave, and then, or they could even say this is a wave right here, this is the third wave. Sometimes they, they'll just say this is not a stopping point. This is, it's one, two, three, four, and then five, or something like that. And then, but the problem is, you know, waves within waves within waves. Now when I go to two hour, um, 
you know, here's another wave. One, two, three, four, five. So there's a little small wave right there. So that's what I mean, waves within waves. This is a one, two, three, and then there'd probably be a little retracement, and then that was four, and then five, you know. And if you just keep zooming in, there's waves within waves. You know, there's waves within waves. One, two, three, right? And that's a incomplete wave, but let's go to a more... If you get closer, you'll start seeing wave after wave. One, two, three, four, five. So this particular wave is kind of already, you could say it's ending. So that's the thing about waves is there's waves within waves and within waves. And what part of the wave are you in? Um, so that's my take on uh, these Elliott wave theorists. Um, there is some, you know, something about it. I mean, things to tend to come in waves or at a certain point in an uptrend and another uptrend and a small downtrend or it depends. You know, you'll see waves after waves or waves within waves. I mean, the, the, it gets kind of confusing after a while. It's, it's trying to, my point is what I'm trying to get at. It, it gets confusing. So there is something I want to touch about that, Elliot Wave Theorist. Um, yeah, there's something to it. Do I trade on it? I, I don't really because um, the fact that there's waves within waves within waves, it's really hard to turn, um, discern f for me on what part of the wave I'm at. So I don't really look at waves too much. But um, there is something there. If you pull back long enough, uh, you can see these waves occurring. Uh, it's just a question of you have to figure out what part of the wave you're in and which wave are you in within each waves of waves. If that makes any sense. It probably doesn't, but... So, anyways, let's go back to... Um, oh, I'm adding... Um, let me see here. Let's go back to 12 hour. So this is Bitfin. It's doing the same thing. And like I said, I might even have to pull back to a day to see you know where the next price and I have always said 700 is the next price hit now whether if it goes up or down here I I don't know that's something that's gonna have to be determined but I can only say it's like look, look at where it is and that's probably the range you're gonna see here is it's gonna hit here bounce around here this level or may bounce down to only shoot up again you never know about these things but my point is even on a 12 period hour 12 hour period you'll see that it's riding on this top average here the 10 period average which is a very bullish sign when it rides on this uh, average it's a very bullish going meaning that it's upward um, similar to what you saw here as it rides on this wave or this particular average here on the 10 period going down it's very strong and then you see it riding it down again until you get here then you're, you're starting to see the flip side uh, you're seeing the rise up along the top of this moving average which is very bullish so anyways let's go and do um, okay I added Kraken I've incorporated Kraken um, just because it's it is a US company and not only that, but it's it's I find it interesting. Uh, they're a U.S. company that is mostly doing euros. So most of their customers are not even um, may or may not be even in the U.S. So you get a different perspective. Um, what I like about Kraken, and I think I'm going to start uh, even trading on Kraken, is that um, it is a way for me to trade euro. I mean, I can do that right now, but um, I would say they're the only U.S. company that I can trade euros. And so, um, you know, just skip my, I, I am noticing that I'm getting more euro trades, uh, more requests for bitcoins from Europe. And so, uh, for me, using Kraken as a uh, price indicator 
uh, makes a lot of sense. And plus, they're in the U.S., so if I have any problems with them, um, I might have some legal recourse uh, just in case. But so far from what I've read about them, and I haven't used them yet, but um, I've taken a look at their trading platform, and I have to admit, it's, it's pretty good. It, it, they, they allow you to do a lot of things, you know, um, just like a regular trading account, literally. You can take short, you can take long, uh, it stops, limits, one cancels the other, good till the end of the day, you know, all that stuff, all your trades. So, um, you know, you can do a lot of things with Kraken, and very similar to like a Bitfin, as well as your normal limits uh, on the buy and the sell side. So, the only thing is, you know, the, the volume is a little bit lower on average, um, the, you know, but at the same time, they're the highest volume in euros that I know, that I've seen. I don't know if there's any uh, any higher out there, but um, I, I think it's worthwhile to look at or analyze uh, the Kraken uh, chart. So, anyways, I'm going to pull back here again on the daily because it's it's getting to that point where you have to pull back daily. So on Kraken, you'll see that this this peak high right here. It's 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 the way it's working, and, and and there is a line here. Let me back out to so if you, anybody who's trading Kraken can see this. Okay, so I'm on a three-day period chart for as long as it can go. So I'm trying to show what's on there. So um, I'm only working with uh, okay. I'm only working with what I got here. And so there is uh, this correlating line. So this line here, so there was a third level on Kraken that I don't see um, on the other exchanges. So Kraken is different. I see this channel here and then this channel which I've been seeing on the other charts but I don't see this channel so this is what's different about Kraken is that this actually had a channel here on the bottom side so there's a channel up here and then there's as the price was moving you're, you're starting to see other channels starting to form see right there so you see the bottom channel you see this channel here, you see this channel, now you're going to start seeing another channel. So you're going to see starting, um, you start seeing some channels being formed. Some resistance lines and just, just, just some channels here which I call uh, support and resistance. Once they break through they become the support uh, or if they don't break through they're the resistance and they fall down to this support and this becomes the support. So, so you see how it stopped here and then breaks through, pulls back, and breaks through again and stops. So this is another line here that stops. And then oh, this is on Kraken, so this is the price here. And so the next point for Kraken is is this point, I believe. So there's another, uh, you know, there's a, a channel here being formed, and then there's going to be another channel here that's going to be formed. And if we go back further, I mean, the next, if it breaks through this channel or that resistance, uh, the next one is going to be here, so it's going to be 604 euros. Uh, the next one after that, I mean, and then it, you, you've got to remember that this and this is a channel right here, so it's going to bounce in somewhere between here and there if it does stall. Uh, the next one after that it is this peak right here, this peak right here, which is at uh, 691. So, so there are some ways you can figure out where the price is going to go, and if it breaks through a certain resistant line, chances are it's going to break up higher. Or if it's just dangling right there, you have to wait and watch. Um, you could put in your limits around here if it ever goes down, because you know I really think that it, some retracement is needed. 
um, because it's, it's just going to happen. But you'll know that because I think on the 25 period average, um, this you'll know that it's retracing because by the time this catches up, the price will be at that price level at this at this average right here, and that's when you know it's retraced. There could be a possible chance after that to um, buy your bitcoins then, and then especially if it's on an uptrend, if that's the retracement, you'll, you'll notice on, on Elliott Waves, uh, they often retrace back to a another average and then push up from there. So if this is one, this could be two, uh, and then three, four, oh, one, two, and then you'll see it three here, then we'll retrace back to here to, because I know I can't put lines but if you just imagine lines that where I, where I had them you'll, you'll see how it bounces down and then you're getting into like Fibonacci's which I think there's there's something in here for that let me see tools there you, there you go so there is something here called uh, Fibonacci retracements and, and, and everything um, My opinion is on that uh, there is something to you know like it gets close the the Fibonacci lines that you see here come close to some of these like the way I've had I'm 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 setting up like this like this there's a line here then there'll be a line here then there'll be a line here and it moves and the price bounces in between those lines as it's going up and down uh, going on an uptrend and a downtrend but you know they're not always exact they're pretty darn close what I'd rather do is I'm incorporating some of the ideas of Fibonacci uh, retracements but I'm doing it with based on past price history not on the actual Fibonacci itself because it they don't always line up and they're not always exact too I, I can't even for my, my opinion on it is I can't even believe people use them to trade because you're, you're literally just you know I don't know, it's almost like guessing. You might as well just guess. But that's my opinion. Some people use them as a tool. I, I don't. Um, I just like to make my own lines because it makes sense to me. So anyways, that concludes this episode. Sorry if it was such a long, but I think uh, um, probably a lot of people are wondering what's going on with the price, where the price is going to be, or would like to get a better idea of, of, of the price action. Well, I hope this helped. Anyways, um, Feel free to like, dislike, uh, leave a comment, or even do a video response. Um, the battery's getting low, sorry about that. Until next time, stay tuned. Bye.